We have a, a really exciting and informative educational program for you this summer. One, we have our STEAM uh, sports program. We're doing sports virtually. We want our young people to understand the business of sports, but also some of the tools that they will need to be successful, whether they're playing basketball, football, soccer, tennis, volleyball, bowling. All sports require a certain level of discipline. And so we're going to start out with fitness. We have an expert fitness trainer that will teach uh, fitness virtually. Your children, if they're at home, they're sheltered in place, they need to exercise. And we're going to give you and them some tools for exercise. Well, if you don't like fitness, we have Zumba for the parents and for students who want to try a more, uh, I guess it's like uh, music with your fitness. So you have Zumba for uh, the older young people, but fitness training for those who really want to become athletically ready uh, for the fall and for the winter. In addition to that, we're teaching archaeology. Our young people need to understand how our culture has uh, evolved. And, you know, you hear about dinosaurs, you learn about it, but we have a, an expert archaeologist teaching the science of archaeology. They're going to do some virtual digs. They, we have some archaeology kits that we will send to students and their parents so that you can uh, understand what it means to, to be an archaeologist and understand the science of archaeology. We're also going to look at coding. Uh, there's so many jobs that are becoming available in this tech world that we live in. We're talking about artificial intelligence and help you understand when you uh, talk to your uh, television, you're using artificial intelligence. When you have echo in your home, it's artificial intelligence and we're using robots. So we're teaching our young people the technology, the science of the technology that exists today and is, is developing even as I speak. They will be learning that in our summer program. It'll be fun. Uh, they're going to learn something about virtual reality. You can put yourself in the football game, in the basketball game. You are on the field. You're on the court. You're on the tennis court. You are actually hitting the ball. We'll be doing all of that. You need to register your kids right now. Go to pushexcel.org. Register today. It's not too late. It's an eight-week summer program. Every day we have something different happening. And then on Saturday we do all of the classes so that if you miss Monday through Friday, pick it up on Saturday. It's only $25. I don't know where in the world you can go and get a virtual education. We, we have writing classes. Many young people, particularly those who are going to college, you need to know how to write. We have a writing instructor from the University of Chicago. It's called Winning Words, teaching you how to use the words that you think about, you hear about, and write speeches, write your own speeches. Of course, uh, we have a number of other of programs theater. Some of you are, are great actors. I've seen you behave in uh, in some of our programs. We're going to have uh, some of our young orators in the theater program. We are uh, producing little skits and vignettes, uh, teaching our young people how to uh, use voice control, how to use body language, and how to uh, act out scenes. We may be producing some uh, future actors and actresses. In our summer program, uh, we have so much to offer. We want parents, we want you to sign your children up, your students, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, the kids on your block. Don't have them running around doing absolutely nothing. This will prepare them for when they go back to school. Everything is virtual. You don't have to show up. You don't have to bring them anywhere. You don't have to pick them up at the end of the day. They're with you, but they're with us online. Once you register, the entire schedule is available to you, so you'll see where they're supposed to be, what they are supposed to be doing uh, each hour of the program. And it'll go for eight weeks all the way through the first week in September. It's an exciting program. Oh, oh, I forgot. The end of it, we have, well, throughout we have virtual tours. We're going to visit a farm. Some young people have never seen a farm, so we're going to do a virtual visit to a black farm in Atlanta, Georgia. They get to see how the things they eat, the things that you buy, how they grow them, how they raise these animals on the farm. So we're going to visit a farm. Also, 
uh, many young people getting ready, their high school juniors, uh, rising seniors, as they call themselves. We're going to rise them into a virtual college tour. They're going to get on a virtual bus, and we will visit several colleges and universities, visit some historic sites. It is going to be almost as much fun as being on the road. They won't know that they're not on the road, except that they don't have to spend a night away from home. They don't have to pack anything, but we're going to have uh, all sorts of gifts for them. It's going to be so much fun. I'm going to even go on this virtual college tour. And we don't have to worry about COVID because we're not on a bus. We're not in a hotel. But I promise you it's going to be exciting. And then when we uh, finish that, we have something for educators. I know parents. I know you're wondering, what is this back to school going to look like? What do I need to do to prepare my child for school reopening in, uh, in September? Uh, how will it look if they open in August? What will it look like? Well, we're going to have two sessions just for you to talk about school reopening. One will be uh, on July 27th, Monday, Monday, July 27th from 6 to 8. We'll look at what is K-12 to reopening going to look like? What are the issues that school districts are concerned about? What should you be worried about in terms of your child, your teachers, uh, contracting COVID? How will they protect your child? How will your child learn differently? How will the school uh, be organized? We're going to talk about all of those things on July 27th. And then on August the 3rd, we're going to look at higher education. I know you're wondering, Pam, should I just keep my child home? I know they finished, uh, they graduated from high school. College is something we've been looking forward to. Where should they go? What are colleges wrestling with? What does reopening a campus look like? Will they have dormitories? Will they have uh, common meals? How will they eat every day? Uh, how will they uh, sanitize? We're going to talk about all of that on August 3rd. We'll have some college administrators, some professors. We'll have some students raise their concerns. We just want to bring you as much up-to-date information that we can. And then we have a third a session on August 10th. Some of you are sending your students to majority uh, institutions where they uh, African-American students and Latino students, they're in the minority. What kind of issues do they face? Black children on white, predominantly white campuses. What happens after all of the marches, uh, George Floyd, when your child is going back to high school or college in these remote towns where you're not there? What concerns do they have? What kind of issues uh, raised? Are they uh, are they being uh, attacked by other students? Will they be safe on the campus? How will they feel in these classrooms? How can we help the schools make sure that they understand the pressures that um, African American students who are in the minority in these institutions, what they what the challenges they face living in the dorm, uh, returning to classes. And teachers are raising questions about their ethnicity, their heritage, people hanging nooses uh, in the bathroom. All of that we're going to talk about on August 10th. And we have a, a panel of experts, a team of young uh, students who are enrolled in these institutions, sharing some of the concerns that students have. You don't want to miss this series of educational uh, town halls designed to inform, inspire, and engage you in the movement. Now, one final thing that we're going to be talking about, I know you've heard uh, the president talk about sending uh, federal uh, troops to cities where there are Democratic mayors, uh, where there seems to be a, a level of violence, whether it's Chicago, Detroit, uh, New York, uh, Atlanta. He's decided to, uh, to do what he feels is appropriate. However, uh, we believe that uh, it is morally wrong, and we also believe that there's some clear legal issues uh, that he does not have the legal authority to do what he keeps threatening to do. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Keep watching this broadcast. We want to keep you informed, keep you engaged, keep you inspired, and we want to make sure that all of you, one, Make sure that everyone in your house has, has counted in the census, everyone you work with, everyone you worship with, 
and every everyone that lives in your neighborhood has been counted in the census. It's very simple, very few questions. Make sure that everybody you know gets counted because that's where resources flow to people that are counted. Want to make sure that everyone you know who's eligible is registered to vote. Don't have children living in your house that are eligible to register and vote and have not registered. It's an easy process. They can register online. Make sure the seniors you know that may or may not be able to get out in November, they should be prepared now to request an opportunity to vote by mail. We want to make sure that everyone who's eligible is registered and ready to vote. This is a historic and, and very important election. We cannot let this moment pass, this moment in history. It, it is really, we're voting to preserve our the constitutional protections that we have enjoyed across the years. We're voting to make sure that our country becomes back to the country that it once was respected on the world stage. We have to make sure that we vote for not just president, we have to vote for U.S. senators. The Senate, remember, determines who sits on the United States Supreme Court, the federal courts. The Senate approves all federal appointments and recommendations by the president. The Senate is a powerful body in the United States uh, Congress. You and I don't need to skip past the voting for Senate. We also will vote for members of the United States House of Representatives. And then when you get past the federal offices, you, you have to think about who's going to represent you at the state level. Some people are running for governor. Some people are running for state uh, legislative seats. State legislators determine your criminal justice policy. They determine funding for schools in your state, both K-12 and higher ed. State legislatures have a lot of power. They make decisions that affect your very life. And so you don't want to skip past that on the ballot. You're going to get tired. Just get yourself a rest. Get you some comfortable shoes so that in November, there are no excuses. And where you, if your state allows it, vote by mail. That way you don't have to worry about sitting anywhere, standing anywhere, and getting sick anywhere. The other thing is, after you get past the state offices, there are county offices. Some people are running for uh, state's attorney. Some people are, and those people are the ones that the police arrest them on the street. It is the state's attorney or the district attorney that approves the charges. You want to know who that is. You want to make sure that person is going to be fair and just. You have to really focus. Don't get tired when you get down to the county races. And then some of people are running for county commission. They determine the resources, the budget for the county health systems, the county educational system, school districts outside of major cities like Chicago. The county controls their budget. They have control over the budget for the sheriff. Sometimes people are running for sheriff this time. Well, the sheriff runs the jails in your county. You don't. You need to know who that is and what kind of person that is that's running. Don't get and please don't forget to vote for judges. You're going to see a judge before you ever see the president off of television. You will be before a judge either on a ticket, a parking ticket, or moving violation. You're getting a divorce, or you're going to go to a probate court because somebody in your family left you something, left you a house, and you don't know that you could probate it differently. You're going to probate uh, because somebody left a will and didn't think about. So at any rate, you're going to go to court. You, you go to court for child custody, child payment. You're going to go to court for something. You will see a judge before you meet any of these other people. So it's important that you vote for the judges. And they're always at the end of the ballot. And people say, I'm just frustrated. Well, no, don't get you frustrated. You get somebody to sit there with you. Because if you don't read well, don't worry about it. You have a right for assistance. Say, I can't see. Then take your person that can see in there with you to help you see the names on the ballot, and get you a sample ballot before you go vote because you don't want to go in there getting confused because that's what some of us do. Just get tired, just I just ain't going to vote no more. No, I want you to take your time because this is an important election. I promise you, if you vote and get everybody in your family, you'll vote together as a family. That way y'all can help each other out. All I'm saying is this is an important season. We're going to keep you informed, want to keep you inspired, and but we want to get you engaged. You want to help push? 
There's so much you can do. We have the Push Excel programs. You say, what are y'all doing? We're doing oratorical. And you're going to see them August the 1st. That whole Saturday, you'll see our oratorical program. And we expect you who are watching us all over the world, you can have your child in our virtual oratorical program. Sign them up. We have coaches in coaching. We have speech therapists that can help them. Oratory helps. Even if you don't want to be a great orator, you want your child to learn how to communicate. Because wherever they go, they're going to have to communicate with people. So the oratorical program, August 1st. Then August uh, 3rd, our second uh, Push Excel uh, Education Summit. And then August 10th, Push uh, another Education Summit looking at blacks in uh, institutions that are predominantly white. You need to understand these issues as you look at students returning to school in the fall. It's a lot to think about. It's a lot to talk about. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Call us, 773-FREEDOM. We're looking to hear from you, and you need to join. If you can't do anything else, you need to join us right now. Go to rainbowpush.org, and you can donate, or you can become a member. We need 100,000 members. By the end of the year, I know we can. I believe we will. And some of you need to be joining our consumer club. We're getting ready to take some consumer action. One young man says, no grocery store in his neighborhood. We can make that happen. You don't have a gas station in your neighborhood. We can fight for that. If you don't have a black car dealer where you are, we can fight for that. If you don't have uh, any black-owned restaurants in your city, we can fight for that. You don't have any black products on the shelves in your stores. We can fight for that. If you don't see any black contractors working, call us 773-FREEDOM.